Thomas Jefferson and his wife Martha wrote many letters, but when Martha died pretty early on, uh, t t Thomas Jefferson burned them all. And the only correspondence that we have is a piece of paper on which Martha Jefferson wrote what her daughter thought was an original poem. And then halfway through, the, the hand, the writing changes to Thomas J Jefferson. And I'm going to show you and I'll read you this. Uh, I'll see if you can see it there. Time wastes too fast. Every letter I trace tells me with what rapidity life follows my pen. The days and hours of it are flying over our heads like clouds of a windy day never to return. More everything presses on, and every time I kiss thy hand to bid adieu, every absence which follows it are preludes to that eternal separation which we are shortly to make. So this is written probably, we think, uh, around the time that Martha died uh, a couple of months after her fifth child, most of them die in childbirth. Um, so this piece of paper is attached to her a lock of her hair and her daughter and then her granddaughter get it. And they think it's a poem that their mom wrote, but it's not. This is, this is a, a, a passage from a book called The Life and Opinions of Tristram Shandy, Gentleman by Lawrence Stern, written in 1759 to about 1767, maybe. Uh, it was written in, in nine volumes, pu published um, periodically over those years. Now, I, I was introduced to, to Tristram, Tristram Shandy um, in a much different way. Uh, I... I I was a lifelong reader of, of C.S. Lewis. My parents, my mother read us um, the Chronicles of Narnia and the Space Trilogy when we were in elementary school, and then I read it a number of times, and then I read all the popular books, the Christian books, Mere Christianity, and all those books in high school. And then in college, I read his um, scholarly works, the Cambridge Press works, um, the four... Uh, the discarded image is one of them. Well, I wanted to be like C.S. Lewis, so I I figured out what books he had read. Uh, he, he read Jane Austen, and even though I didn't read my Jane Austen for high school, I read Jane Austen uh, when I realized that C.S. Lewis loved it. Um, a guy named George MacDonald, I read all of his books. He's a Victorian writer, and then a guy named Charles Williams, early 20th century, a, a, a person who, a contemporary of C.S. Lewis. Well, there's one book, actually it was a character that C.S. Lewis mentions a number of times, named Uncle Toby, and he, he acted as if we should all know who Uncle Toby is, and that we've all read Tristram Shandy. So, so I went, and in college, I read Tristram Shandy, and I'll say it was a hard book. I, I didn't understand it. I thought it was supposed to be funny or sentimental, and I, I just found it uh, unpleasant. But I, I, I barreled my way through it, and in the end, I, I thought, oh, yes, this is funny, and I've read it. Uh, not all the way through, but I've read bits of it since then. And I wanted to read you, I wish I had known this. I, this is the 19-year-old C.S. Lewis writing a letter to his friend about his first reading of, of Tristram Shandy here. You can read it with me. This is, this is again, 19-year-old, 18 or 19-year-old C.S. Lewis just going off to, to, to college. I've read today some 10 pages of Tristram Shandy, and I'm wondering whether I like it. It is certainly the maddest book ever written. It gives you the impression of an escaped lunatic's conver conversation while chasing his hat on a windy May morning. Yet there are beautiful, serious parts in it, though of a sentimental kind, as I know from my father. Have you ever come across it? So, so I, again, I wish I knew that this was a really difficult book. Um, uh, so he, he asked his friend, oh, by the way, so, so C.S. Lewis's father was from Ireland. And Tristram Shandy, Lawrence Stern was born in Ireland, 
Um, and so C.S. Lewis's father was a fan of Tristan Shandy. I like, though, his friend, this is his childhood friend, writes him back uh, the next year. And listen to what he says. I, I was interested to hear that you like Tristan Shandy. Personally, I've tried in vain to see the good points of it. The absolute disconnection or scrappiness, the abundant coarseness of an utterly vulgar, non-voluptuous sort, and the general smoking room atmosphere of the book were too much for me. Um, but then, th that was in 1917, then, and I forgot to put the year, in 1933, in 1933, uh, C.S. Lewis says this to Arthur Grease, writing to him, so again, uh, 12 years, Glad to hear you're at Tristram Shandy. What good company. Isn't Uncle Toby seriously and morally one of the loveliest characters ever created? So that's C.S. Lewis uh, uh, about Tristram Shandy. Now, it's hard to describe Tristram Shandy, the book. It's written in 1760, right? The novel had just been invented, in a sense, um, Robinson Crusoe. I guess that some people say the first one would be um, Pilgrim's Progress, which is not a novel, right? But that's kind of the first moment. Then, then you have you have Christopher, you have Robinson Crusoe, not really a novel either. But then you have some early novels by by Fielding and all that. So he's there. You know, the novels maybe thirty years old, forty years old. Um, when he starts writing, and he says at the very beginning, I'm not going to follow any rules. I'm not going to do anything that people want. And the whole book is about him trying to get born, right? It begins in volume one with his conception. That's the first sentence. First line is wondering why my parents weren't more serious when they were conceiving me. Why were they distracted? And he goes on about, you know, things that his mother said during their lovemaking. By the way, this is a body book. This is a book that's 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 condemned by many people, mostly condemned because Lawrence Stern was a a, 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 a minister, a, a, a priest of the Ang in the Anglican Church, uh, and people thought, well, this is just not a book that that, that priests should be writing. Um, but the book then digresses and it spends this uh, huge amount of time. I would say over over half of the time it's digressing into weird uh, scholarly arguments. And, and it's just a, a, a mess of a book. Um, uh, I think by the time we reach, by the time we reach volume four, um, uh, we're just being born. No, it's, it's again, it's a mess of a book. I think it's funny. Um, I, I think it's funny, but if you don't think it's funny, I, there's nothing much for you to read. Uh, the odd thing is, though, Thomas Jefferson thought it was one of the great moral books, and and and, and C.S. Lewis thinks that that Uncle Toby is one of the great moral c characters. It's a, a fascinating book. I would urge you to read it, but d d do know it's a mad book. Thanks.